Orca's newborn calf dies. What she does next is heartwarming. Since the beginning of times, animals have always been below men as living beings. We as humans don't often care much about how they live or even how many of them are out there. In other words, the little importance we pay to animals lead these creatures to always being one step closer to extinction. Little by little, different species all over the world cease to exist. Most of the time, this happens because of indiscriminate hunting, pollution, and even the destruction of many places they live. Moreover, every year there are more and more endangered species. Killer whales, for example are every time closer to making it to the list of endangered animals. In fact, they are vulnerable to a number of threats of natural and anthropogenic origin. Now there was a time when these sea animals were hated. They were once seen as nothing but pests. They used to be shot, harpooned, and even machine gunned by whalers, fishermen, and government agencies. However, as time has passed, the feeling toward these beautiful animals have changed. In fact, killer whales are now loved by many, especially as people learn they are able to display complex social behavior, even grief. That's right, killer whales do also feel just as we do. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, we're getting to it. Although killer whales are not on the list of endangered species, there is one community of these animals that have already made it onto the list. The southern resident killer whales, or orcas of the Salish Sea, as they're also known, entered the list of endangered animals back in 2006. Currently, there are only 74 individuals belonging to the species, and Tahlequah, the orca of this story, is one of them. Being that there are only a few of these animals left, the Center for Whale Research, CWR, has been monitoring the killer whales in a non-invasive way. Over the years, they've learned more about these creatures and the way they behave. Of course, they've also been trying to determine whether or not there are more orcas of this species living beneath the waves of the Pacific Northwest region. At first, it was thought there were thousands of them. But the sad truth is that this particular species does not even have a hundred specimens, which is why the remaining orcas such as Tahlequah are vital in ensuring the survival of their species. Now here's the thing, Tahlequah has actually been delivering calves into the world quite a few times over the years. Unfortunately, she has experienced loss on more than one occasion, and we're not only talking about her descendants, but also her family. In 2010, at the age of 12, Tahlequah had her first calf, Notch. Sadly, he did not survive for too long. About six years after that, her sister also passed away. This led to Tahlequah taking her niece, Star, and nephew, Dipper, under her fin. Unfortunately, months later, Dipper found the same fate as her mother and passed away. As you can understand, suffering these many losses could have a devastating effect on any human. But orcas are safe, right? Well, not really. As mentioned before, it has been proven orcas are actually capable to feel, and some even claim they experience feelings far more intensely than humans do. And that's perhaps why on July 28, 2018, Tahlequah appeared to behave in such an unprecedented way. But why? What went on during that day? Well, on that day, Tahlequah gave birth to the first calf the Southern Resident Killer Whales, or SRKW, population had seen in three years. In fact, since late 2015, all pregnancies this species had were unsuccessful. So a newborn, such as the one Tahlequah was bringing into the world, meant hope for this group of predators. Of course, the Center for Whale Research team was more than overjoyed by the news that Tahlequah was giving birth. So they took through the waves and traveled a long distance in order to document the newborn. However, upon their arrival, they noticed that tragedy had struck. Tahlequah's calf had passed away, and all of this in less than an hour since she was born. The cause of her death remains unclear. However, it is believed contributing factors such as the lack of food and pollution could have led the newborn to meet such an unfortunate fate. But, as sad as this event was, what caught the attention of the CWR team was Tahlequah's reaction to the situation. You see, the baby's body had begun to sink. 
However, the grieving mother was not ready to accept that her newborn was gone. In fact, she seemed determined to prevent her newborn's carcass from descending to the bottom of the sea. What makes this even more impressive is the fact that she continued to do this all day. The scene was so heartbreaking that even members of her pod began to support her by helping to carry her calf's body. Over two weeks later, Tahlequah was still holding her baby's body afloat. This was, of course, very unlikely in an orca. In fact, both dolphins and killer whales have been observed carrying their dead for up to seven days. Tahlequah, however, took things to a whole new level. The unfortunate event and the unusual of the situation led this story to become popular across the internet. Both scientists and whale lovers started to express their grief and empathy. Others voiced their concerns for the bereaved mother's health. In the end, the Center for Whale Research team waited until Tahlequah was done grieving so they could examine her and determine whether or not there was a risk to her health. Fortunately, after 17 days and at least 1,000 miles later, Tahlequah was back to normal and experts were confident everything was okay with her. The founding director of the CWR, Ken Balcom, even went as far to say that Tahlequah had been seen frolicking in near waters. This sad but at the same time heartwarming story demonstrates that the loss of a child does not only have a heartbreaking impact on humans, but also in the animals. Let's hope Tahlequah's tragic tale encourages people to be more aware of their influence on this planet.